I spent 141 days on only three layers of dirt where I had to kill 2,000 zombies for iron, breed hundreds of pigs for one golden apple, and dig 10,000 dirt by hand. I then thought I was done playing this world, but the commenters and even YouTube themselves wanted a part two, so here we are in the middle of a raid that I never even expected to finish. All I had left to kill was a ravager stuck in my moat. I couldn't get close enough to hit it, so instead, I don't know why this was my next thought, I tried to drown it. But a few minutes later, it was still swimming along. The water must have messed with the AI though because I was then able to punch it to death. Now I could tell you the events of day 144, which was me building a horse stable, but 145 is way better. In the last video, my entire goal was to get wood, which took a while because there are no villages in this world. I turned them off so they won't generate, so if someone tells me to look for a village, I might freak out. But today, a wandering trader spawned who sold saplings. They were jungle, not the best, but I'll take it. Getting wood is just going to change what we can do in this world, and honestly, it was quite overwhelming. So many things that I wanted to do, I finally could. But I was so happy because my goal for this video, instead of surviving like the last video, I want to thrive. Now that I have practically infinite shovels, I'm now able to turn the slime chunks into path blocks, which is probably the best way to spawn proof it. You gotta be joking. And it sells birch saplings. I didn't have enough emeralds to buy them at the moment, so I put him in a boat for later. That evening, I moved him out further just because when a wandering trader spawns, they are only in your world for a few days. But if the trader is in chunks that aren't loaded, that timer doesn't count down, which gives us more time to get those emeralds for the saplings. The only way to get those emeralds is to trade leather with my leather worker. I didn't have any cows in the world, so the only way I could get leather is from fishing. Okay, I'm gonna cut to the chase. The odds of fishing leather is 1%, so to get two leather, I'd have to fish over 200 times. We don't have time for this. I didn't want it to come to this, but I massacred my animals a second time. By removing all the passive mobs from spawn, the game will spawn new passive mobs, like cows. I was just moving my horse far from the spawn chunks when I spotted them, the first cows of the series. Day 148, I got the leather! ethically. Don't worry, there are some leftover cows for later. But now I have one birch sapling. Today is going great. It got even better when all of a sudden some sheep spawned, which means I now have the three important passive mobs. Pigs, sheep, and cows. Not horses though, but my bony friend does the trick. Goodness, we just have so much to do because now with those sheep, I can make beds, which means I can breed our two villagers. So I spent that evening turning this dirt pile into an actually decent house. The villagers now have children who are going to turn into fishermen. They have a game changer changing trade, but I'm waiting for them to grow up, so it seems like a good time to move the cows. Also, you might notice how I'm not in my normal skin. I've been cursed to be Steve. That's because most of this video was recorded without Wi-Fi. I recently moved out on my own, and our router hasn't arrived yet. And now the cows have been put in their pen very, very far away from spawn chunks because I don't want to have to massacre my animals for the third time. But I will be honest, some of the cows will die. I still need their leather to sell for emeralds. But does that mean a pacifist? Oh, no, no, no. No, an iron golem spawned today. He got quite massacred. Not the sheep though. I have a soft spot for them. They get a nice pen near the cows. I do feel like I glossed over killing that iron golem though. Like them spawning is going to be crazy. Not needing to get iron from zombies will speed everything up. So that evening I put together a simple iron farm, which is just a zombie in a boat. That's the only thing you need for an iron golem to spawn. So all I then had to do was climb up this ladder and kill the golems. Yes, it's manual and incredibly scuffed, but in just one night I got a full set of armor. Day 151, a baby villager escaped through a hole in the house, but nothing a boat can't fix. Well, it didn't fix it that well because they escaped again. That wasn't my biggest issue because that night a creeper got into my cow pen and must have been looking for blood because it just blew up. I wasn't even near it. Then to make matters worse, my sheep died. Wait a, wait a minute, I mean, I died, I died my sheep. Day 152, I started work on a giant carrot farm. The bigger the better because I'll be turning these carrots into emeralds. I really wanted those emeralds, so I worked through the night and into the morning. One thing I discovered to be quite annoying was running back and forth between villagers at spawn and the cows far away. That's why I'm digging a canal from the cows to spawn. The next morning, I filled up the canal and after AFKing at my crops, I gave it a test run. Wait, horse, horse, get out of the way! The crash was so big, my sheep died again. I, wait, I mean, I dyed my sheep back to white so I could sell their wool to the shepherds. Day 155, you can't hear it, but I was talking it with my roommate Parker, showing him around this world. Parker didn't have Wi-Fi as well, so we just chatted about this video. 
Well, Parker does have a hotspot, which is like a Wi-Fi connection, just really slow, and Parker doesn't have anything better to do, so we opened up a LAN world. RecRap2 will be joining us on the Super Flat World for the next few days. Yes, I know, he is quite laggy. I gave him some iron armor to start off because I made this rule, if he dies, he gets banned from this world. Hopefully that puts him on edge. I don't want him to die though, because he can do all the boring chores that I don't want to do. That evening, a wandering trader spawned, nothing new, but they're selling slime balls for four emeralds. Yeah, in this economy, nobody's buying that. It's like selling air to homeless people. Day 158, Parker had one goal and one goal only. Get every single music disc possible. That night, I got two unique discs. I think Parker got a few more, but every now and then, I would hear Parker screaming from his bedroom, and I just think, yeah, I hope he's not dead. With my discs and the many he gathered over the last few days, we had 11 of the 12 we could get. Unluckily, we were just missing blocks, my favorite disc. I'd love to finish the collection now, but Parker was leaving to go play pickleball with some friends. Day 159, there's some technical issues with the land world, so I had to pull up a copy of the world once Parker left. Wait, wrong copy. Okay, day 160, it's fixed. Now we can focus. The first thing I did was level up my toolsmith. Of the three villagers that can sell us diamond items, we're only able to get a toolsmith. The others require workstations crafted with stone, but we will never, ever have stone. But on the bright side, we now have enchanted shovels. Our next project is a mob farm. It's just a standard design, so there's nothing much to say, but I did realize it's going to be super fast because during the day, mobs can't spawn anywhere but the mob farm. It only took two days to build, so I'll test it in the morning. But First, I leveled up the toolsmith enough so we can get diamond axes and diamond shovels. I'm too broke to buy one though. Uh, weren't we gonna go check on the mob farm? It's alright. Faster than a mob farm in a normal world, but realistically it could be faster. Day 163 was quite peaceful. I just chopped trees. It just is, this is just annoying. I can't wait for us to get torches. That should stop this from happening. But to get torches, I'll need some more villagers, so I expanded their little house. See, I have some morals not cramming them into a small house, but they still have holes in their walls and a mud floor, and I killed our golems. Uh, no worries, uh, moving on. I went fishing in my pond, yay! I fished into the morning because if I catch like 20 cod, we could finally get torches. No, I'm not talking about starting grease fires, even though that would be fun. I actually needed them to trade with the fisherman to level him up, but I didn't have enough fish. For efficiency's sake, I made a small pond, so while I'm fishing, my crops can grow and my sheep can eat. That worked out really well because I was able to then get my first enchanted bow. There's not a way to win enchant bows, so killing skeletons is the only way to get them. It was on day 165 I was finally able to level up the fishermen unlocking the campfire trade. I immediately broke the campfire, which dropped charcoal, which we'd use to craft more campfires, break more, and then turn that charcoal into torches. I should say, I didn't even think of this. If it wasn't for this comment here, we would not have torches. I wanted them so badly because now that we can use torches for spawn proofing, we can finally get rid of this ugly Lego flooring. Day 166, there was a man wearing pants on my front lawn, so I stole them and added them to my collection. Then I just really need to finish the outer fence. There's gonna be tons of skeletons showing up trying to steal those pants back. Actually, those iron guns Golems could protect me, but I did kill a lot of them, enough to craft an anvil. I bought another diamond shovel so I combine them for efficiency 3 so I can insta-mine dirt! Okay, technically I was right, I can insta-mine dirt, just not grass. We were so close to greatness. I do love day 168 though. This is where I started construction on Rainforest Cafe. One thing I came to terms with was that we are never getting furnaces, which led me to believe it was raw food for me. But wait a minute! I got campfires. So Rainforest Cafe is a huge fire hazard, but it cooks our food. Day 169, nothing funny happened, okay? All I did was breed the cows, the sheep, and even the villagers got some action. On to day 170, I realized I wasn't recording until like midday. All you need to know is that I got the bad omen effect. Here's the other pillagers for proof. So I started a raid, feeling confident I could beat it now that I have iron armor, weapons, and a bow but one wave in and I ran out of arrows. I don't want to tell you about the rest of the raid because it sucked, a lot. I was miserable. It wasn't until day 172 I finished the raid, which I am proud, it is the first time I completed a raid, but I hated that, never again. But with the effect of Hero of the Village, I was able to get more emeralds than usual. Also, the toolsmith threw me a stone pickaxe, so 172 days in, we got getting an upgrade. Okay. The rest of the day, I built a chunk-wide pond because I would love to be able to fish up an enchanted book. I can't really bother to get an exact enchantment because how rare that is, but I could disenchant the book, craft a lectern, and get librarians who will sell me exact enchantments. Day 173, I realized we can't disenchant the book because we can't get a grindstone. Took me long enough to figure that out, even when it had stone in the name. So the only way we can get highly enchanted tools is by combining them in anvils. So I felt it was finally time to build an iron farm. 
farm. This is a design I built dozens of times. It's the ENX04 Day 1 Iron Farm. It's just that I'm building it on Day 173. I will say, it is weird building this design rather than digging it out of the ground. That does mean I need to spawn proof around the farm, but these path blocks should do the trick. That evening, I moved three villagers over, and the second I trapped the zombie, the iron farm started producing. While the iron farm was running in the background, I checked the wiki to see what new villagers we could get. Turns out, I have all the ones I could get right now. If a wandering trader came by and sold me sugarcane, we could get more, but for now, I have all the different villagers. Day 176, I realized my pig pen was, uh, lacking. It's a nice area that I didn't want to go to waste, so I turned it into a tree farm. Well, farm is a bit of an exaggeration. It's just a place for me to chop trees, and then the saplings get collected automatically. I spent the morning chopping, so I had tons of wood, meaning I can make more torches. That night, I placed as many torches as I could to keep my base safe. Maybe now I'll stop getting shot. Now, I was talking about torches being the thing that spawn-proofed, but get this. I was just working with my sheep, spawn-proofing around that area, which meant the mob farm was collecting mobs in the background. When the sun set, you might have noticed something. There's no mobs out here. They must have all gotten bored and gone home. No, actually, there's just so many mobs in the mob farm, the game doesn't want to spawn anymore. Day 179, I went back to fishing, seeing if I can catch anything interesting like an enchanted fishing rod. I didn't, so I gave up, but then it rained and I went back. Still nothing though, I don't know why I keep trying. Day 180, the sheep died again. Okay, I've made that joke like three times now. What I actually did was separate the colored sheep from the white sheep. The only colors of sheep we can get right now are the colors I get from flowers, so there's not that many colors of sheep we had to collect. On day 181, I was still dealing with the problem of running from spawn over to the sheep, just taking up time. 20 seconds to be exact. I wasn't the best with using the boat every time because turning around honestly makes it about the same amount of time as running. My only other idea was to use a horse, which ended up being four seconds faster than the other traveling method. So I built a horse road with little parking terminals at the end. Day 182, I got three new colors of sheep, magenta, purple, and light gray. The rest of the day was spent playing shepherd by shearing sheep and making the cousins in her breed. I had so much fun working with the sheep, I didn't even realize it was already day 184. I'm just making a wall so no slime can kill my sheep. But I'd be fine if something killed my chickens, there's too many of them. While cooking my ethically collected chicken, I was looking through my advancements list. One of them is to tame every cat, and I knew there were some buggers around here. One of the 11 cats tamed. Another one was to slide on a honey block, which reminded me that we can get bees. When a birch tree grows next to a flower, it has a 5% chance of spawning a beehive along with it. It only took a day to get a beehive, but then I was thinking, why do we even really need these bees? What's our main objective in the end? I just felt lost doing projects without meaning. So I called together a town council. The goal of this meeting was to come up with goals that we could be working on until day 250. Since there were only animals in attendance, it's not surprising that most of the goals were animal oriented. It took us all day to come up with nine long-term tasks, but I'm back to being excited about this world. The first task I started on was a ginormous melon farm. Okay, I want to have so many melons, I say, what am I gonna do with all these melons? I'm gonna sell them to farmers for emeralds, that's what I'm gonna do. Also to all those commenters asking how I got melon seeds, a wandering trader sold them to me while I was setting up the town council meeting. I did not cheat. This is how big I want the farm to be. It's gonna take a while, but the economy's gonna love it. Speaking of economy, I realized I could sell iron from my iron farm to my toolsmith. That was quite handy because I was in desperate need for a new axe. Day 190, I spent the day prepping the farmland. I didn't have the seeds yet, but once the melons start producing, we'll be filling the land quite fast. Day 191, I got wood so I could light up the land. Can't have any of these spiders eating my melons. Day 192 was more work on the melon farm. I can practically smell the economy going up. If I wanted to speed up this process, I would need quite a lot of bones. But I was too lazy to walk all the way from spawn to the mob farm to get it. So, I just built another one. It was going to be glorious, making the farming process a million times quicker. But it was day 194, I finished the melon farm, and day 195, I finished the mob farm. So it didn't help, like, at all. Okay, that's a little mean. It's nice to have a mob farm on my land, it just didn't help with the farm. Next project on the board was making a big beehive. Because I wanted to build it out of wool, I worked on getting more colorful sheep, which was another task on the board. But the sheep keep escaping! I discovered that when the sheep are young, they go under the carpet and then grow up. They then simply break the laws of physics and phase through the fence. It's like overpopulation where the obvious solution is to stop breeding, but come on, it's fun. Day 198, I deforested my backyard, but to show you that I care about nature, I rescued this bee. But it wouldn't go into its hive. And I'm pretty sure if it doesn't go into the hive, it will die. Yeah, buddy, 
you're gonna die. Day 199, I started progress on the bee sanctuary. In my previous 100 days, the bees normally end up dying, but this time is different. But while I was breeding bees, I found out on the wiki that I actually needed silk touch to move a beehive. There's like a 0% chance I'm getting silk touch anytime soon, but I believed that I would find a solution to this bee problem, so I kept constructing the big beehive. Guess who found a solution? All you need is rope. The bees I just brought in won't go into the hives, but the newly bred ones should. But the big beehive isn't completed yet because well, there's no big beehive. So that evening, I set out to build one. I say set out because I barely didn't have enough materials to complete it. Day 201, I gathered enough mud and wool to finish the beehive. Taking a step back and looking at it, I'm really proud of this build. If you don't like it, tell me in the comments that I'll totally 100% read. To finish the day, I got the sticky situation achievement. You don't know how long this took to figure out, but now my bee tasks are complete. Day 203, I got a diamond hoe from a toolsmith, but I never ended up recording it. I also leveled up way more toolsmith, selling iron for emeralds is just too good. I knew selling iron wouldn't last forever, so my next goal was to get a farmer villager trading hall so I could sell melons instead of iron. That meant the villagers were due for another renovation. If you're their property brother, you're basically their god. I introduced them to their new expansion, hopefully they still like me. I bought a whole bunch of diamond axes and spent the day combining them. While grinding for XP, a zombie dropped a sharp two unbreaking two iron sword. I immediately repaired the sword, letting this break would be an absolute waste. This is so rare, it's gonna be a while until we get another enchanted sword. By day 205, I got a nearly perfect diamond axe. I would rather have silk touch than fortune, but oh well. With efficiency 5, we can instamine the melons. Ah, so satisfying. But these melons need to be sold, so I built a shed for the villagers to live in. Later that day, I got another enchanted bow, so I combined it with my old one. I just gotta say, combining little scraps of tools together to get something useful is so fun. It's an incredibly new way for me to enchant, and I'm way proud of this diamond axe. Heck, I'm so happy to have a sharpness to unbreaking two sword. In any other world, that would just be weak. Day 206, my villagers were all grown up. Beep, beep, beep. That's the backing up sound. Villagers coming through. Moving villagers is surprisingly grueling work. It took two days to get all of them there. Now all I have to do is level them up, but with how many melons I have, it was a breeze. I'm looking at my notes and day 209 is quite a lot. First, I made an iron sword specifically for the mob farm. My sharpness sword is too valuable to waste on one hit kills, so a regular iron sword will have to do. I then was going to use the experience I gained to get an efficiency five shovel, but I realized it was pointless because there's nothing you instamine with efficiency five. And then I finish my day by killing some cows. Don't worry, Peta, I coated it so that they don't feel pain. Day 210, I had so much wealth, I decided to make a treasure room. This place had an emerald trim, iron bars, and a mud brick roof. I pulled out all the stops. Inside here, I can store all my items because in America, whoever dies with the most toys wins. My next task was to make an actually organized storage system. So far, I've only had a few double chests that were organized, some holding dirt or wood or treasures, but they all turned into miscellaneous chests. Looking back, I think my solution was pretty bad. All I did for organization was make eight more double chests, all labeled miscellaneous as well. Day 212, I mined out a chunk just for the fun of it. Hi, orange sheep. I needed some fish just in case I ran into an untamed cat. Speak of the devil, there were two of them sitting in a boat. The task that has been scaring me off is the gold farm. Because I can't go to the nether, our gold farm has to be pig-based, where we strike them with lightning and then kill the piglins. There aren't any tutorials out there for a pig-based gold farm, that's not surprising, but that meant I needed to come up with my own design. The biggest problem was how the piglins would get into huge groups, and by the time you killed them all, some of the gold would despawn. My solution to fix that turned out to just be a bunch of 5x5 five five squares separated by slabs. Each of these squares are gonna need a lightning rod, so I did some copper collecting. I tried to turn the mob farm into a machine that would make drowns, but it was slow and I knew there was a faster way. And that way is by using my good friend, the shade platform. So I spent the day restoring it. It's quite a mess. Ah, it's so good to be back. And no, I won't explain how this works. You should have watched the first hundred days, silly. Even though I didn't have all the lightning rods, I was still pretty much done with the farm. For the next few days, I'll just be breeding pigs in the background. To make this process easier, I started work on a carrot farm right next to the gold farm. It's like the fourth one I've made. Today is 217, which just so happens to be my favorite prime number. Wait, what? Either way, I finished the carrot farm and then went to make absolute bank. Day 218 was a bunch of chores. I chopped melons, spawn proofed a chunk, got experience, and even checked on my bees. I'm surprised they're alive. Then I finished the night by making another perfect diamond axe. Most of my money goes to getting tools, but at the same time, it makes me money. Call me the wolf on Wall Street, cause I'm making a profit. Day 219 looks the exact same except for the fact that I tamed a cat. 
What can I say? I'm just on the grind. And this grind is paying off because in my chicken coop, I found a wandering trader who sold me pumpkin seeds and green dye. The first thing I did was get the three new sheep colors, green, lime, and cyan. It took me all day to get these colors, but I had some time after, so I started the pumpkin farm. The pumpkin farm won't be as big as the melon farm, mostly because I'm still feeling that grueling experience of making the melon farm. Except for this time, there are now slimes to trample my crops. While the pumpkin farm infrastructure was complete, all I had to do was wait for pumpkins to to grow. I then chopped so many melons that my axe started to break. It cost 22 experience to fix it and that price tag is only going to be going up. Not looking forward to that. While leveling up villagers, I ended up purchasing a fish in a bucket which got me the tactical fishing achievement. And then I bought a whole lot more fish, not sure what I'm gonna use them for. Just kidding, I'm making a fish tank. Personally, I would hate to live in this pond, but they're fish. They can't think thoughts, especially thoughts about revolution. Day 225, I was back to gathering copper because I was one away from having nine. How did I get so much? Well, I've been killing drowns over the past few days. I just don't tell you because that's boring. Because I had enough copper for a block, I got the achievement wax on and wax off. If you don't get those references, maybe you're a little too young for YouTube. I also found my favorite breed of cat, which is Calico. I named it Duncan after the cat I have. I was just on a roll today because I also got the hired help achievement. Yeah, that guy didn't have a chance. Day 227, I was just grinding XP when a skeleton dropped a bow. Oh my goodness, it did not need to be this good. Once again, normally a bow like this is average, but on super flat, a bow like this is so much more rewarding. So that night, I took some victory shots and got the sniper duel advancement. Day 228, I started my biggest and probably last project of the video because did I already say big? Because yeah, this thing's gonna be big. I want to make the most efficient mob farm possible in super flat. Currently, the biggest slowdown is when it turns night because everything spawns outside the mob farm. To spawn proof the area around the mob farm, I was planning on just mining the ground to bedrock like I do for slime chunks, but after some math, yeah, we don't have time for that. It's a 256 by 256 area I need to mob proof, so torches are going to be the way. By day 229, I had the area marked out, so I started lighting it up. To help, I used a light levels texture pack. Everything the red touches is dangerous, but what the light touches is our kingdom. By the end of day 230, one fourth of the land was already lit up, cause yeah, I just played torches and broke campfires. Guess what I did on day 231? Yeah, I know, riveting. We're halfway, almost done. I didn't even write anything down for day 232 because I just chopped trees, got torches, and placed them. There was a thunderstorm on day 233, but uh, I didn't breed any of the pigs, so the gold farm isn't gonna work. I tried to place torches at night, but the mobs nearly killed me. But don't worry, soon I'll farm them and their grandfathers and their grandfathers' fathers. Finally, on day 234, everything was lit up. Just like the other mob farms, this one will be built out of dirt as well. I started construction, but do you really think you want me to tell you about building the exact same mob farm for the third time? I don't think so, so instead I'm just gonna show you this nice view. You might think the mob farm was finished on day 235, but I kept working and added another layer. I promised it would be the fastest. You might be wondering about what I'm doing about the slimes. One thing you should know is that these slimes aren't actually filling up the mob cap, so they won't slow down the mob farm, but I would still like them to be gone. That means I have to mud every single slime chunk in that area. It was quite boring and tedious, especially with the slimes attacking me, but they probably only do it because I'm destroying their habitat. Sorry. To reward me for all my hard work, the game gave me another enchanted iron sword. Bane of arthropods. Karma's real. Day 238, I wanted to try something new. Instead of running to the OP mob farm, why don't I take a minecart? I've actually been thinking of making a railway ever since I made the iron farm, so I'm quite pleased to be making one today. Because I didn't have any powered rails, we could only be powered by gravity, meaning the railway has to be on a tilt. My first line was a little too steep, so I took it down to rebuild it more efficiently. I was so rich, I bought a bunch of decorations for the track. I even graffitied the lightning bolt. Today feels like the right day. There's been something I've needed to do. It's not fun but I need to do it before the video is over. It's spawn proofing this chunk. Every single day, one slime has spawned here. I haven't bothered trying to fix the spawn proof because the iron golems kill the slime, but I would be remiss if I didn't finish it now. One last item I want to get enchanted is a fishing rod. I could fish for one, but I don't think I would catch one soon, so instead I leveled up fishermen villagers. At level three, they'll sell you a fishing rod with a random enchantment. Now the first rod they sold had unbreaking on it, which is really only useful if there are other enchantments. So I kept leveling villagers up and got unbreaking after 
after unbreaking after unbreaking. Not a single villager sold something barely useful. The fishermen were in the way of the other villagers, so I started building a place for them to go. Like a resort of sorts. You know what, let's call it, what if we called it Guantanamo Bay? I shipped them off to the island where they will be forever. I actually had a lot of fun building this resort. I'm glad this could be my last project. Well, second to last, because there's one more project I haven't finished yet. Parker's back because we are one music disc short of a complete collection. We have five days to get the disc blocks. While we were out collecting discs that evening, I spotted a full diamond zombie. They didn't drop any armor, just imagine if I got a piece. So we didn't get the music disc blocks that evening, but that won't slow us down. I started work on a parkour course for a shrine in the sky. We just want a cool build to store all these discs. They deserve better than to be stuck in a chest. No new disc that evening, but do we look like quitters? No, don't answer that. It's rhetorical. We did get the disc the first thing in the evening of day 247, which gives us three and a half days to finish the shrine. So we hopped into a test world to come up with as many designs as we could. What one do you think we picked as our final design? Nope, you're wrong. Parker built this little cloud design that looks way better. Then we made it four times bigger. I honestly didn't think we could build it in time. I was a hater, but Parker was a believer and he just at least wanted to try. What you see right now is a schematic. It shows a ghost version of what we need to build, which helped me build faster. While I constructed the cloud, Parker would go and work with the sheep because we needed like nine stacks of wool. Day 249, I finished the base design of the cloud and we started adding the little decorations. We also changed the parkour block from emeralds to birch. I'm glad to save a little bit of money. We finished our day by ceremonially placing the discs into the item frames, and then Parker ran off into the sunset. I genuinely don't know where he's going or what he's doing, but he said he'd be back soon. But now, I just want to say, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. The support on the first hundred days was crazy. So... I have a deal. There's more I could do in this world, so I'd be willing to make a 500 days grand finale video. But it's going to take over 100 hours to make. But all I ask in return is that you subscribe. I don't need comments or likes. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. I'm going to race with my friend Ashwag2 million, so if you just took two seconds to hit that button, I'd be so grateful. Day 250, Parker showed back up. I have no clue how he got that. But once again, Thank you for watching. If you want 500 days, the grand finale video to this world, please subscribe. Wait, Parker, what are you doing?